Hello there. Welcome to Delight Channel as we continue our conversation on employee management. Last week, we did a quick detour to this topic because we thought it was critical enough to get a specific attention. And why are we doing this? We strongly believe that employee management is one critical piece in your jigsaw puzzle as you try to build a successful and enduring enterprise. And why is this important? Remember that famous quote, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with others. Those critical others are your employees. They are very, very important because when you find them and you know how to manage them, they will look after your customers, they will own your dream, they will run with it, they will look after your assets, and if your dream is to have a lasting and enduring enterprise, when you are no longer ready, willing, or even able to continue to lead the team, you would have a very strong team that will be able to cope without you. That is why we have been paying attention to this. And last week we started We've touched on two points. Number one was that you need to have an efficient and effective organizational design. Why? Watch last week's video and you'll get all the details there. And we also said that you need an effective organizational asset. What are we talking about when we say organizational assets? We mean things like your vision, your mission. And I particularly dwelled on the concept of behavior and the concept of culture. So this week, I want to extend that conversation and move it a bit further. Now that you have the design, now you have the, the assets, what are the other three things that you need to add to your game to make this happen? Number three on the list will then be your recruitment philosophy. I am using those words deliberately. It is not just about who you give the responsibility to, to recruit for you. It is not just about which firm or how much you are paying for the recruitment exercise. I am saying you need to be deliberate about your, your recruitment philosophy. What does that mean really? It means that when you are trying to hire, what are you looking out for? Your organizational asset is not just for decoration on the wall, in your boxes, on your PC. It should shape everything you are trying to do. Meaning, you are not just trying to find the brightest. You are trying to find, in particular, people with the right attitude that fit the kind of culture that you are trying to build. And if need be, if you have to choose between um, skills and attitude, you must always look out to recruit for attitude and then train for skills. Now, I am not saying you should hire mediocre or incompetent people. I have mentioned this in one of my videos before that skill is a threshold measure. There is a cutoff point. There is a minimum value everybody must have. So, we are saying that if you have somebody who crosses that threshold but has an exciting attitude that suits your culture, that suits the kind of organization you are trying to build, you should go for that person compared to the one who is highly skilled but does not display or suggest that the attitudinal coefficient will suit your own desire. And how do you know these things? Very small things. Little things like even running basic psychometric tests. You can find a lot, a couple that are free, and you, there are some that are paid where professionals will help you do some analysis. But more importantly, these are things you watch out for in the probation period. Usually in every organization, when you are offering employment, you will say there will be X period of probation. It can be one month. It can be two months, it can be three months, it can be longer. One of the things you are trying to check, in addition to performance, is the attitude. You are trying to do a culture check. 
to confirm that this individual has what it takes to contribute to the kind of culture that you are trying to build. And beyond that, you are then deliberate in who you are promoting. Okay, so when it comes to this recruitment, it's about who you bring in, who you retain, who you promote, because your recruitment philosophy is actually the beginning of bringing the people in and it is not something to be taken carelessly. That is number three. Number four will then be involvement and investment. Many times organizations get so big, so busy, so straight-jacketed that they forget that that man that is supposed to be a junior staff with you is probably a father somewhere, is a head of family somewhere, maybe even leading some non-governmental organization somewhere. And instead of getting the whole man engaged in your organization, you are only utilizing a fraction of it. You are losing as an organization. So you need to be deliberate to take as much as is available in your employees. And if you have been deliberate from your design to your assets, to your recruitment philosophy, you are likely going to end up with a big mass of people that fit what you are trying to do. Meaning that it won't be such a big deal to draw them out because they will be part of where you are going. So involve them. Engage their brain, engage their body, engage their mind within controls. This is not supposed to be a setup where there are no controls because you are trusting. Remember that you don't give trust, it is earned. And the name of the game is process. Okay? So, trust everybody, but everybody must, must, must present their fact. It is not something to be given blindly, but you must involve them within control. Let them sign NDAs. Ensure that you have a very tight internal control where one person cannot absolutely abuse the system. And if you can invest in technology, let there be clear controls on it. There are many ways you do it to ensure that you don't just leave it to the integrity or the reputation of the individual. You build a system that checks itself. So that is involvement. Then investment speaks about you will see skill deficiency. And this is very huge now because... The future is looking completely different from the past. There must be an appetite for investing and it doesn't have to cost an arm or a leg. It could just be an in-house knowledge sharing session. It could be a deliberate effort to create space for people to go online and learn. It could even be a collective learning where as an organization, you decide that we all need to get very skilled in Excel. And so, one hour every week, everybody comes together. We watch this video. We practice together. Whatever it takes, invest in your people. Invest in them emotionally. Show interest in their welfare. Let it not just be about work, 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 work. Show interest in what's important to them. Do whatever you can to make sure that there's an alignment between their goals and your goal. That's the only way they will settle. If you just want them to be chasing yours and you don't worry about their career direction, their career interest, their career development, you are only going to end up with a high level of employee turnover in your organization. So involve them invest in them that would be point number four and point number five that glues everything together for me if you know me for long enough you know i always talk about this that is your performance management system why is that important all the things we've been saying your behavior your culture recruitment philosophy who you promote who you retain who you reward okay how do you invest in them how do you even know what they need it is the performance management system that gives you a framework to manage this in an objective manner, okay? It helps you to do it in a structured manner that saves it from abuse, saves it from favoritism, saves it from nepotism, gives it a feel of transparency and objectivity. And it helps the staff to trust the institution, to trust the organization. The goalpost is clear. They know what they need to chase. They know what they get when they chase it. But in terms of the PMS, it goes beyond just the design. There must also be a 
an intense commitment to the implementation. There must not be any doubt in anybody's mind as to your commitment to enforcing it. Meaning, it doesn't get to the point of evaluation and you start feeling like, oh, everybody should, uh, you want to do the central tendency kind of bias and let everybody just, no, you are courageous enough to act on it. Those that need to get a cake, you give them cake. Those that need to get cane, you give them cane. And when you do it two cycles, the organization sits up and you'll be shocked as the amount of value you are able to unlock in your organization. I'm not necessarily saying that these are the only five things you need to worry about. I'm only saying that if you take care of these five things, you will be on your way to building a group of individuals that will not just be a group, but will be a team. And we've had a video about building winning team that dwelt on the issue of team formation. That's why I'm not going back on that. If you want to know the details, go to our library. You will find it there and watch it. It complements this very, very importantly. But whatever you do, please take your people development seriously. Take your employee management seriously. It's a critical success factor in your journey of becoming an, a successful and enduring entrepreneur. Ooh, that's a lot to say today. Thanks for being here once again this week. As usual, I'm always requesting you show us some love, send us questions, give us feedback, give us thumbs up. And if there are things we need to do better, please don't hesitate to share with us. We would like to hear from you. And until next week, when we then move to something completely brand new as well, still in this same space of the final building blocks, I want you to please never forget that t -Mark is still my name and that all I'm trying to do is what? Make a little difference. I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.